Hey guys, it's Coach San here, and in this video we're going to be explaining the gyro straight function and exactly what it is. So the first thing I want to preface is that this video is a functions video, which is different to some of our previous videos because we've been covering the fundamentals of Python. So these are things like how to go forward, how to go backwards, how to use flow control, how to just basically use your sensors. Well, in this video we're going to be creating a function. A programming function is essentially a uh, where we create a program that does something. And in our case, we're going to want to create a program where it makes the robot go perfectly straight using the gyro sensor. Now to do this, we're going to be using Python, but before then, I'm going to use the whiteboard to explain what exactly the gyro straight is uh, in its understanding and its fundamentals. So before we get started, let's head over to our uh, whiteboard and see what the gyro straight is and how it actually works to make the gyro straight or the robot go perfectly straight. Okay, so now we're just going to explain how the gyro straight actually works and what it does to actually move back into its correct position. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to draw a dotted line. And let's just assume this dotted line is perfectly straight and it represents the zero angle. This is why I've written zero right there. And now I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a visual representation of the robot. So imagine you're looking at the robot from the top and now it's just a square. So if your robot's traveling along, right, and it's going zero, eventually it's going to veer one way or another. So let's just say the robot veers in that direction. That's going to create an angle. And that angle, let's just say it's two degrees. So now it's veered two degrees off course. What we want to do is essentially, we want to make the robot veer back into its correct course. Or another way of saying this is go back two degrees or go negative two degrees. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing zero minus the gyro angle, right? And the reason why we want to do this is because this will negate the gyro angle and it will provide it in the opposite direction. And this will keep going, right? So let's just say it goes again, and then it goes in the opposite direction. So it then goes negative two degrees that way. We then want to do zero minus negative two, which in this case is going to be positive two, and it's going to go back into the straight direction. And this goes on for a long period of time. So if I draw out this diagram and I keep going forever, what it's going to be doing is it's going to be going at a slightly oscillating wave but the thing is, it's going perfectly straight all the time. And this is what the gyro straight does initially. Now, as you can imagine, you don't want to be doing waves like this all the time. If you're doing waves like this all the time, it's not going to be very accurate. Sometimes you might stop here and you might be away from the zero angle. Other times you might stop here and you'll still be further from the zero angle. So what we do to account for this is essentially we provide a bit more power to our corrections. This is called the GSPK, and I'll show you exactly what it means in the program. But essentially, if I draw my zero line again, and this time I'm gonna draw zero, two zero lines. So I'm gonna do another one right here. A low GSPK, let's just say it's one to 0 0.5, it's gonna be a very wavy gyro straight, and it's gonna take a long time to get to its correction. But a higher gyro straight, or something, a high GSPK, something that's in the middle, it's going to be a nice, smooth gyro straight, and it's gonna be oscillating between that forward and back line. So we don't get those big jumps from the straight line to its error. This is why a GSPK of normally 1 to 2 is quite good, and a lower GSPK of 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 is worse. So I'll show you exactly how to program a GSPK in, but for now you just need to understand that this is a number that controls the rate of corrections. And a higher number means it's going to be a smoother gyro straight, and a lower number means it's going to be a more jagged gyro straight, or in the other words, um, it's going to be smoother, but it's going to have a less time to correct back itself. Okay, so that was the gyro straight in its fundamentals and how it actually is. Now we're going to head over to the laptop and see how to program it in Python. All right, so this is my home screen right here. So I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code. So let me just open it up. And it's pretty quick today, which is great. So let's head over to the Mindstorms tab. And I'm gonna create a new project. Before I do that, let me just open up the user guide. So this is the user guide right here. So I'll be referring to this user guide frequently. So you can um, also refer to the user guide however you want. So I'm gonna create my new project right now and I'm gonna call it my gyro underscore straight. You can call it whatever you like. I'm just gonna call mine gyro straight for now, select folder. And by now we're pretty comfortable with our programming environment. So to get to that, let's just head over to main.py. And this is it right here. So as always, I'm going to start off with the initialization process. Um, it's quite simple. So we actually, we've already got our EV3 book initialized. So let's just head over to our left motor. And this equals, and now I'm going to write down my motor. And I'm going to write port dot b. 
and my port needs to be a O, not a zero. And I'm just going to copy paste this, write it again, and I'm going to write my right motor. And my right motor is plugged into port C. Finally, I have my robot, which is the drive base function. So just to remind you, the drive base function is how we go straight and how we use the robot.drive. So I'm going to use uh, my drive base, just like it is right there. I then need to specify my left motor, my right motor, my axle track, which equals 55.5, sorry, 104. And my wheel diameter, which goes before the axle track, is actually 55.5. And we're getting red because there's no space and there's no underscore right there. And that's a Q instead of an equal sign with space and a one. Okay, so I've got my left motor, my right motor, my wheel diameter, and my axle track. And now we also need to initialize the gyro. So we did this in the sensor video. However, to initialize it, we just write our object name, which I'm going to write as gyro, something very simple that you can refer back to easily. And now I'm going to type in my command to initialize the gyro, which is gyro sensor, as well as the port which is in. So port, dot, and I've got my port in one. So make sure your port is correct, otherwise you're going to get a port error. So this is my initialization for this video. I'm just going to be using the gyro straight and then using that information to be going left, right, or in a perfectly straight line. So now that I've got that here, I can remove the spaces and remove this beep because that is unnecessary as always. Okay. So now I'm just going to quickly write down the gyro straight lines of code and then I'm going to explain what they do. So you should already have an understanding of what it is from our pseudocode in the whiteboard. So let me just write down what it actually is. So as we mentioned, we need to choose a straight angle, which in this case is going to be zero. So to actually reset the angle of the gyro, it does this automatically. However, it's good to write it in so you know what's going on. All we're going to do is type in gyro dot reset underscore angle. And I'm going to reset this angle to zero. And if you want to go into the um, documentation to find out where I found this, just go to EV3 devices followed by gyro. And as you can see here, to reset the angle, just type in reset angle and then actually write the angle. So we need to run that over the command object name. So that was gyro dot reset angle to zero. Now I'm going to go enter and now to actually make our gyro straight work over a given distance, we're going to use the while function. So while, and now I'm going to quickly write down robot dot distance, amazing typing speed right there. And now we're going to do less than or equal to 700. So just to explain this line of code, you may not have seen this less than or equal to before. Essentially, we know that the while function uh, operates over the opposite of the condition that it's in. So we've got while robot dot distance is less than or equal to 700. This means it's going to run while the robot dot distance is greater than or equal to 700. So that means it's going to go forward. So now that I've got that there, I now need to type in my colon. If you want to go a further distance, you can increase this number, or if you want to go a shorter distance, you can decrease this number. For me, 700 degrees or 700 millimeters, which this is in, um, in 70 centimeters, that's going to be enough for my case. And now I'm going to quickly write down the line of code that actually calculates the correction. So as we mentioned, the correction is given by zero minus the gyro dot angle. And just to explain this one last time, so essentially, if our robot is off, it's zero, right? So it's going perfectly straight, perfectly straight, and then it veers for some reason. If the robot veers, that's going to change the angle of the robot by some amount. So let's just say it's veered off by two degrees. If we really want to steer back in the opposite direction, or we want to calculate the correction we need to go back. And to do this, if it's gone off in two degrees, you do zero minus that number that it's gone off by. So zero minus two, and it's going to go back negative two degrees. Therefore, we just have to negate the way it's going in. And now that you guys are in high school, you guys will understand negative numbers and how to use them as well. So let's just say it's going this way, and then it goes negative, right? So let's go, it's veering to a negative side. Therefore, it's now going to calculate negative two or negative three. Let's just go with negative three for now. It's then going to go zero minus negative three, and two negatives make a positive. Therefore, it's going to go three degrees back in the opposite direction. So this line of code right here, correction equals zero minus gyro angle. This essentially calculates how much has gone off by, but also the proportional logic makes it want to go back in the opposite direction. 
So calculating the correction isn't enough. We now want to uh, apply this correction to the steering of the wheels. And to do this, we're going to use our robot.drive function. So I'm going to write robot.drive. And the first value of the robot.drive is essentially the speed. And you can check that just going back to here, back to the robotics. And then we have robot.drive. As you can see, it has a drive speed and then a turn rate. So my drive speed is given in millimeters per second. So I'm just going to write 250. That is on the higher side. You can go lower or higher. The gyrostrate can really work on different speeds, but I'll see. I'll tell you what that looks like very soon. And now I'm going to write down, instead of a value for my turn rate, we want to turn in the direction of the correction, right? That rhymes. Um, however, hopefully that's something to remember. So let's just write correction. And essentially what this is, is what it's gonna do is gonna drive at 250 millimeters per second, so that's fine. But it's also going to then correct itself as it's driving. And the reason for this is because it's calculating the opposite of the gyro angle that it's currently in. So if it is going perfectly straight, it's going zero degrees. Zero minus zero is just zero. Therefore, the correction is going to be zero, which is fine because we just wanna go perfectly straight because our uh, st steering power, so this is in the pace of steering power. Our steering power will be then be zero. However, if we have veered to a side or to an angle, we then want to do the opposite of that angle and steer into that direction right there. So therefore, our turn rate or our steering power or steering direction is our correction. So after that's done, we now just have to write our three lines of code to make our robot stop. So that is the whole gyro straight, but we want to come to a breaking stop. So robot dot stop. and then robot dot, sorry, left motor. Not great typing speed right there. Dot brake. And then right motor dot brake. I can just press enter and then brake. All right, so this was a very simple gyro straight. Now, in reality, we have one more additional thing we have to consider. So this does calculate the correction and this will work. However, what if we want to increase our rate of correction? So if it's veering at an angle, if you want to make a very sharp correction back to its original spot, you basically have to have a GSPK or a gyro straight proportional constant, which multiplies to the correction. So what I'm going to do now is go here, put brackets around this, and now I'm going to multiply this by three. Okay, so now what this is gonna do is this is then going to increase the rate of corrections. Now for now, you don't have to worry about this because very soon we're going to see what happens when we change this number back to one. Okay, so let's just see what this whole program looks like uh, in our example. So as you can see, all it did is it went straight and then as I was pushing it to the side, it then came back to its original uh, zero angle. And this is what we wanted to do. And that correction, how it came back, it was quite sharp, right? Almost straight away, it went back in. If we change this GSPK right here, this number three, we can change this to whatever we want. So let me show you what happens if I change it back to one. Let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, the corrections were not as sharp. They were smoother and they were more blunt. And the reason for this was because our GSPK is now lower. So if you want a high rate of corrections, you go for a high number. A lower rate of corrections, you go for a lower number. Now you don't wanna go too high because you don't wanna make the robot go a jagged in a zigzag line. You really want a smooth gyro straight so it's going perfectly straight. Which is why normally somewhere between one and three, you know, even 2.5 will be fine. Um, it just depends on the weight of your robot and how much gyro straight correction power it needs. So alter your GSPK uh, as you need for your own scenarios. So that was the gyro straight function, but this was only able to go forward. What happens if you want to go backwards? Well, quite simply, as we discussed in our flow control video, all you have to do is you have to change the direction of this. So greater than or equal to 700. We then also need to change our speed. So instead of going negative 250, you're going to go, or positive 250, you're going to negate it to go the other way. So now what this is gonna do is it's gonna flip the direction. Everything else should be exactly fine. So if you wanna keep your uh, GSPK the same, you can, and you wanna keep your distance the same, you can. So you just flip the sign of the distance. You also flip this right here, so it's at negative 700. So now you're going backwards instead of forwards. And then the last thing you're going to do is negate the speed. 
So let's see what this program looks like. So as you can see, the gyrostrate works forwards and backwards. And this is very helpful to us because what this allows us to do is it allows us to go towards our mission model. And then if you want to use the gyrostrate to come back to it as well, to come back to home, you can do that too. So this was the gyrostrate in the opposite direction. Now you might be asking, well, what if I want to change these numbers right here, right? Because these aren't variables yet. To make variables, you just have to write in your objects. And I'm going to write distance. And I'm going to set my distance to 700. And now I'm going to, instead of writing negative 700 here, let's set it to negative for now just to keep it all consistent. I'm going to write distance instead. Okay, and as you can see, this distance perfectly lines up with this distance right here. Don't get it confused with the robot dot distance, that's a different sort of distance. So it's a capital D, which is all good. So now instead of reading this greater than or equal to negative 700 as a number, it's going to read this variable. And then this variable is going to go back up to our objects tab and it's going to read negative 700. Okay. We can also make this 2.5 a variable, so I'm going to call that GSPK. So our GSPK, which controls the rate of corrections, we can now change that to GSPK as well. But we haven't actually assigned a number, so I'm going to write 2.5. And the last thing we're going to change is our speed right here. So I'm going to change this just to simply speed. And now I'm going to write down speed with no capital because that's where I've written that. And I'm going to write 250. Okay, and let me change this to positive again. So now what I've done is I've got a positive distance and a positive speed. This means it's going forward. So we now need to change this to less than or equal to. This was the only thing we need to change, right? Because the sign in distance is already changed. So we don't need to change the distance sign once again. So what if you were to create a program where you can go forward and backwards based on the number you plug into distance and speed, right? Because if your distance is positive, that means you're going forward. And correspondingly, if your distance is negative, that means you're going backwards. So if you want to do multiple cases, so if you want to go forward in one case, backwards in another case, all you have to use is an if slash else statement. So let's just say we have our gyro function right here. We then write if, and then we write distance, not robot.distance, but actually our variable distance is greater than zero. If our distance is greater than zero, this means it must be positive. So we write that down right there. And as you can see, our distance lines up nicely. And we have our while function right here, but because it's under the if, we then have to indent it. So I'm going to write tab. And let me also indent this. So if robot to distance is greater than zero, it's going to do the forward version of the gyro straight. Now, so we also have an else condition because what happens if the distance isn't greater than zero? Well, that's going to be what happens if the distance is less than zero or if you want to go backwards. You might be asking, what if the distance is exactly zero? Well, this case is pretty trivial because if your distance is zero, that means you're not moving. So you really wouldn't want to create a gyro straight with distance to equal zero because that's just a stop and you're not really want to go anywhere. So else we're going to do the same while, except we just need to flip the signs. So I'm going to go into here. And I'm then going to change this right here. And I'm now also going to do that right there, put a colon right there. Okay, so if the distance is greater than zero, it's going to go forward. If the distance is less than zero, or in this case, if the distance is negative, it's going to apply the backwards case. So you can now see the benefit of adding variables because now we can change this number, right? If we change it to a negative, it's going to automatically go backwards. If you change it to a positive, it's going to automatically go forwards. Something you have to remember is if you change this to a negative, this speed also has to be negative. The program doesn't account for this for now. So at the moment, you have to change both the distance and the speed. If you don't want to do that for some reason, you're lazy and you don't want to put a negative speed as well, all you have to do is you have to just apply a negative to this value right here. So by doing that, you then automatically negate this version right here, so you don't have to do it again. So that's uh, another quick fix you can do if you just want to change the distance. But if your, if your distance is negative and positive, that's going to control whether it's going forward or whether it's going backwards. So that pretty much wraps up this video. As you can see, this line of code, it's not very complicated. Really, it's just one, two, and three lines of code that control the gyro straight. However, we have all of this right here to make sure that this line of code or this uh, gyro straight function is capable in multiple scenarios. So we can use it to go at different distances, four different GSPKs, four different speeds. Okay, so as you can see, that was the whole program and we have now wrapped up this video. So hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one.